Let's do an example. Suppose we have the following data points, x1, x2, and x3, with y1 equals negative 1, y2 equals 1, and y3 equals 1. Find the maximal margin hyperplane and identify any support vectors. Our convex optimization problem takes the form minimize f of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, where beta 0, beta lies in R3. Given the constraint g sub i of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 is less than or equal to 0 for i equals 1, 2, and 3, where f of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 is 1 half the norm of beta square and g sub i of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 is this expression here and i equals 1, 2, and 3. So g sub 1 equals to this. Okay, if we plug in um, the values for our data points, g sub 2 is this and g sub 3 is this. The dual Lagrangian is given by this formula. Okay, so if we plug in um, the values that we have for our data, we get this. Okay. We want to maximize L sub D subject to the constraints alpha i is greater than or equal to zero for all i and alpha 1 y1 plus alpha 2 y2 plus alpha 3 y3 equals 0. That is, um, we need that alpha i is greater than or equal to 0 for all i and negative alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 0. Using alpha 1 equals alpha 2 plus alpha 3, rewrite L sub d as this. Okay, just plug in alpha 2 plus alpha 3 for alpha 1. Simplifying, we get this. So we want to maximize L sub d subject to the constraints alpha 2 is greater than or equal to 0 and alpha 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So we're maximizing L sub d on the positive orthant, alpha 2 greater than or equal to 0 and alpha 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So here's the positive orthant. It's just this uh, quadrant here. Now let's look for any critical points in the interior of the positive orthant by setting the gradient of L sub d equal to 0. Okay, taking the partial derivatives, the partial of L sub d with respect to alpha 2 is this. The partial of L sub d with respect to alpha 3 is this. Setting the gradient equal to 0, we get this system of equations. Okay, solving this, we get alpha 2 is 2 ninth and alpha 3 is 2 ninth. So 2 ninth 2 ninth is a critical point in the interior of the positive orthant. L sub d evaluated there is 4 ninth. Using the second derivative test, we can show that L sub d of alpha has a local max at 2 ninth 2 ninth. However, a local max of a concave function on a convex set is a global max. L sub d of alpha 2 alpha 3 is a concave function and the positive orthant E given by this is convex. 
Note also that L sub D of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 Okay, note, note that this is also concave. Okay, so um, what we have here is that L sub D of alpha 2, alpha 3 is a concave function and E is convex. So L sub D of alpha 2, alpha 3 has a global max on E. L sub D of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 has a global max at alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 over the set F given by this. If and only if L sub D of alpha 2, alpha 3 has a global max at alpha 2, alpha 3 over the set E. It follows that L sub D of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 has a global max at 4 ninth, 2 ninth, 2 ninth. Okay, so let me write that here. Okay, L sub D of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 has a global max at 4 ninth, 2 ninth, 2 ninth. Okay, um, here we just found alpha 1 because we already know alpha 2 and alpha 3. Okay, beta is given by this formula. So plugging in our values for uh, y sub i, x i, and alpha i we get this. Simplifying, we get this. So beta 1 is 2 thirds and beta 2 is negative 2 thirds. By complementary slackness, alpha i times this expression is 0 for all i. Okay, so for i equals to 1, we get this, okay, and solving for beta 0, we get 1 third. Okay, so beta 0 is 1 third, beta 1 is 2 thirds, and beta 2 is negative 2 thirds. Our hyperplane is given by beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 equals 0. Plugging in our values for beta 0, beta 1, and beta 2, we get this. Okay, uh, Solving for x2, we get this. Okay, So this is the equation of a line. Let's see the graph of this. Okay, so this purple line here. Okay, um, we have our data points, x1, x2, and x3. As you can see, this purple line separates the two classes. This line is the maximal margin hyperplane. Since alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 are all non-zero, we have that each xi satisfies this equation. Hence, x1, x2, and x3 all lie on the margin and are therefore support vectors. You can see that from the graph. Okay, um, imagine that we draw the edges of this slab. x1, x2, and x3 they all lie on the edges of this slab.